Hello, I'm Father John Camus. I'm the pastor of the Church of St. Jean-Baptiste on 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. And today we'll be celebrating the fifth Sunday of Lent. And as we draw close to Holy Week, we hear Jesus speak of his approaching death. Yet his message to his disciples is not so much about his death as it is about eternal life. As Christians, we know that as difficult as death is, our focus, our true hope, is in eternal life. During this final week before Holy Week, let us keep in mind that just as our Lenten journey will not end with Good Friday, but with Easter, so too our own life's journey does not end in death, but in new life. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, you suffered, died, and were raised from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the new life of everla of, and everlasting covenant of love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you restore us to new life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father, help us to be more like your Son, who loved the world and died for our salvation. Inspire us by his love and guide us by his example. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today I'll just be reading the Gospel passage. It's still taken from the Gospel of John. So some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they asked him, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there thought, heard it and thought it was thunder, but others said, no, an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus said to them, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would endure. The Gospel of the Lord. So this Gospel begins in a very interesting way. Some Greeks came to worship at the temple during the Passover feast. They asked Philip if they could speak with Jesus. They were in the court of the Gentiles, the only area in the temple where non-Jews could enter. And this is the court that just recently Jesus cleansed when he first began his ministry. Perhaps these Greeks knew of the incident and wanted to check Jesus out. Perhaps they heard of the, his healings, the, the healings that he had performed. We have to remember this cleansing of the temple was an act that imitated, that intimated 
that Jesus was the Messiah. We're not told if Jesus met with these Greeks, but what we do learn is what was on Jesus' mind at that moment. He was thinking about the conclusion of his mission. He was thinking about his death. This is the hour. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Those listening to him would not have understood immediately what he was saying. They would have thought of the prophecy of Daniel, perhaps, where the term Son of Man refers to a Messiah who would liberate Israel and inaugurate a golden age for the Jewish people. The term Son of Man would have gotten their attention instantly. Was Jesus actually saying that he was Daniel's Son of Man? Was Jesus announcing that he was ready to mobilize an army to bring the Roman occupation to an end? Their flash of excitement and hope lasted really but a second. Jesus hit them with two sayings and redefined the Son of Man. He said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. The Son of Man is supposed to be a conquering hero. What's this image of death all about? Jesus then hit them with a second saying, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. More death talk. The disciples must have been reeling. Jesus then spoke a prayer so that they could hear his inmost thoughts. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this hour, for this very purpose that I came here. Father, glorify your name. But it wasn't enough for Jesus to let his disciples hear his prayer. He let them hear his father's response. In a voice that sounded like thunder, they heard, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The father gave witness to Jesus by blessing all that he had done and all he was about to do. The glory of his ministry was to be crowned with the glory of the cross. Again, Jesus shared his thoughts with his disciples. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. This passage is given to us as a prelude to Holy Week. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, when we'll read the Passion according to Mark. The image of the cross will tower over us throughout Holy Week. We mustn't fear it. We mustn't run away from it, like the young man in Mark's Passion, who when Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane, ran away from the scene. While the cross gives witness to God's unconditional love, it simultaneously pleads with us to die like the grain of wheat so that we might be reborn to a new and resurrected life. So let's gather our prayers now. Our covenant with the Lord is written in our hearts, and so we trust that God will hear the prayers we make today. We pray first of all for the church. May we die to whatever separates us from our covenant with the Lord, so that we may produce the fruits of the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our elected, those elected for office. May they see their position as a call to serve all people. Let us pray to the Lord. 
And we continue to pray for all those preparing for baptism this Easter. May God give them the grace to see the world through the eyes of their new faith. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all of us. May this Lenten season instill in us a deeper commitment to our discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray for peace in the Middle East and Eastern Europe. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray in a, maybe a special way uh, this Sunday that's also St. Patrick's Day. So it's our, the patron of our diocese. So let's pray for the good health of our diocese, uh, for the priests, the religious, everyone who serves here and all of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those we know who are ill, and those who are caring for them. And we call them to mind now. Lord God of the covenant, we seek your forgiveness for our lapses as we turn to you once more. Trusting in your fidelity, we lift up our needs to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. We pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. So Almighty God, may the sacrifice we offer take away the sins of those whom you enlightened with the Christian faith. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. This great season of grace is your gift to, our, to your family, to renew us in spirit. You give us strength to purify our hearts, to control our desires, and so to serve you in freedom. You teach us how to live in this passing world with our hearts set on a world that will never end. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you and we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For well, this is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For well, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you and may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. 
Lord, remember your church throughout the world to make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Almighty Father, by this sacrifice, may we always remain one with your Son, Jesus Christ, whose body and blood we share, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And we bow down our heads to pray for God's blessing. Lord, protect us, that we may be free from every evil and serve you with our hearts. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So I'll see you next week as we celebrate the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday.